Printing as a real honest magazine within the calendar year, so look for that on um, wherever that would be. We accept nearly anything people will throw our way. Creative writing, visual art, photos, comics, a to-do list, grocery list, poems about your bike, playlists, a shadow puppet, tracings, and shit you ripped off your own blog. We have a rolling submission process so people can send us anything, anytime. We publish quarterly. Copies of our zine can be mailed directly upon request or can be found at Quimby's starting next month. Contact them at heylittlebrother at gmail.com or uh, you can find them on Facebook by searching. So, um, doing okay over there, John? He's doing okay. All right. So, um, let me find the piece of paper that John gave me to read from. And we'll, we'll get the show on the road in just a minute. If you can't read the writing, it says stove there. I'm going to move this microphone a little bit. Okay, you ready, John? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, in the winter of 2010, kitchen appliance giant... What? Was that too much? <laughs> In the winter of 2010, kitchen appliance giant Maytag developed a breakthrough in the field of household kitchen appliances. The idea itself was as controversial as it was innovative. <laughs> that idea to stock every Maytag kitchen stove with a fully functional human operator, now known as the stove manager. The stove manager's primary function? To clean, maintain, and manage your Maytag stove, all while providing the comforting companionship of a work friend, neighbor, or distant relative. These innovations in the field of stove management propelled Maytag to unparalleled success. The stove managers themselves were an instant hit, and soon became the future of every upper-class household. Although, all of the success and innovation was not without consequence. Meet the first living stove manager, 00671, or as his owners call him, Kiki. jumpsuit Things aren't so easy as a stove manager these days. 
<laughs> this coin gets me through an awful lot, and honestly, I use it to get through times like. physical comedy. <laughs> water is boiling. The water is now at a rolling boil. It's ready for you to put the noodles in it. Yes, I'm a stove manager. My whole life, my whole existence is managing this stove for you people. Making sure that you know when the water is boiling. Making sure that your pizza doesn't burn. Making sure that I'm there with an open hand to give you a toothpick when you need to check your cake. <laughs> sure, I had dreams. Wasn't supposed to be this way. I just did this to pay my way through college. I shouldn't be doing this today. You know how it is. My dad was a stove manager. His dad was a stove manager before him. And my great-grandfather, a hot plate attendant in World War I. Thank you, I wrote that this morning. Water's boiling. It's getting bad. We're starting to lose water level. Pretty soon it'll just be an empty pan. <laughs> it's cooking humor. I put salt in here so it would boil faster. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be so bad. It really wouldn't. I lead a solitary life. I don't have the same complexities that all of you have in your day-to-day -day life. There's no social networking. There's no education system for a stove manager. I just wash the stove. It wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for a few things that I guess I just can't overlook. Things like just looking invisible, being taken for granted all the time, always taken for granted by my owners. Thanks. Look at him. Do you see him? Did you see that? He doesn't understand. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what it's like to be me, a stove manager. He doesn't know what it's like to be invisible. Do you know that they keep me chained up during family functions? During <laughs> holidays? Sure, here I am by the hot stove all day during Thanksgiving. But during the meal, there I am, peering out around the corner. I could see the kids' table off in the horizon, but they keep me shackled to this thing. And Aunt Rosemary comes and takes the lasagna, and I tell her, it's too hot! <laughs> it's too hot! Don't take it over there to those kids! But she doesn't heed my advice. Urinate. <laughs> so I watch as those kids eat that lasagna, scalding the top of their soft, virgin roofs of their Mouse. <laughs> Just like my parents always said, heavy is the hand that wears the stove. <laughs> I was going to cut that one. <laughs> Water's ready. Where'd Brayton go? It's all right, I don't need him. Just talking about stoves. <laughs> so I sit here talking to your strange relatives, your black sheep, and the only comfort I have at the end of the day, the only person I see at the end of the day, is this stove. This dirty stove covered in parsley flakes and turkey grease. And that's the only comfort and solace I have. You don't think I want to end it all? You don't think I want to shove my head in this stove? I think about it every day. All the 
time. But I can't do it because I've got too many responsibilities greater than you, me, all of us together. Water is boiling. Roll and boil. Roll and boil. Because I will not back down, ladies and gentlemen, because I stand before you a proud mm -hmm. stove manager. Gentlemen, John Hugelini. It's great. Never have I been touched in that way. Well, not while you were awake, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Still on fire. That one hurt. That one hurt. I